What's up guys? It's an exciting day. We're getting the car wrapped. So I'm gonna try wrapping it myself. The paint on this car has always been pretty bad, but at least it was one color. But now that I have new doors and a new fender that aren't the same color, we need to get it back to one color again. I could have just spray painted the doors and the fender, but I have some wrap laying around, so we're gonna try to apply it. I've never done wrap before, so this is definitely gonna be a learning experience. The first thing we're gonna do is wash the car. It hasn't been washed in probably two years at least, so it's pretty filthy. So I'm gonna wash it real quick and then we'll uh, get to wrapping. All right, so we got the car washed and cleaned up as best as we could. I removed the tail lights and the um, emblems and all of that. And we're gonna start with the fender here. I took it off the car to make it a little easier and uh, it'll be a little better for testing on so we can uh, get a feel for the wrap and see how well it works. So let's start wrapping. Okay, so we've got this vivid wrap here in gloss white, just like the car was before. I have no idea the quality of this wrap. Um, I just had it laying around, so it is what it is, I guess. We'll put it on and see how good it is. Okay, so we officially gave up on the wrap. It was kind of working out. We were getting it pretty decent, but it still wasn't great. There were a lot of bubbles in it and we had a lot of other issues too. After looking up some reviews on that brand of wrap, it sounds like it's one of the least forgiving. So it's very hard for, um, it's very hard for people that aren't experienced in applying wraps. Uh, we were heating it and stretching it and doing all kinds of things and we were getting it but then uh, when we got to the edges we had worked it so much that the glue was not sticking. So yeah that kind of sucks but uh, it is what it is. It didn't cost me anything to try at least. We're just not going to be able to have the car in all one color for this next event. Which that's definitely not the end of the world. Um, my priority is always driving over anything else. I could really care less how the car looks as long as I'm able to get some seat time. Like I said, I haven't driven this thing in almost two years now, so I'm really excited to get back on track with it. So the plan is gonna be to paint the car in the near future, probably after this season is over, because I don't wanna commit the time to actually sanding it and 
prepping it and doing all the paint uh, between events. But I'm thinking as long as I get the paint to turn out halfway as decent as this engine bay paint that I did, it's going to look uh, nine times better than the wrap was going to. The other thing with the wrap, I don't know if you guys will be able to tell on camera, but it's got like a texture to it. Maybe you can see that right there. So it's almost like orange peel. And one of the biggest flaws in painting a car yourself is that you always end up with orange peel or at least most of the time, unless you're really experienced at spraying paint. So even if there's some orange peel on this, it's still gonna look the same as the wrap, but without all the bubbles and wrinkles and everything else. So it'll look much better. And if I really care about the orange peel, I can just wet sand and buff the whole thing afterwards and then it'll look pristine. But as you can tell, we got uh, everything put back together. So now it's time to start getting everything ready for this thing's first drift event. So the list was pretty short, but I just added a bunch of stuff to it. Basically, this is all we have left to do. It's a bunch of little stuff, really. I need to get the bumper on it. I wanna at least touch up the paint down here where I did body work and on the roof and around the hood latches. I just sprayed some black on there um, so that there wasn't bare metal because I was planning on wrapping over it anyways. But now that I'm not gonna wrap it, I'm gonna spray some white on that and make it look halfway decent because it's gonna drive me crazy if it's looking like that. I'm okay with having the car mismatch body panels, but I'm not okay with having uh, spots like that when I could easily just touch it up with a can of white spray paint. So we'll get that done. I need to dismount uh, tires. I wanna paint the wheels too. And then a few other odds and ends. So let's get to doing all of that and uh, hammer down and get this thing ready. It's Today's Monday and we're leaving Saturday morning for the event, so got a lot to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is raise the suspension. The car was definitely low, about as low as it could really be practically. But now that the exhaust is uh, even lower, since I went from like a one and a half inch exhaust to a three inch, I need to raise it up probably half an inch maybe. Hopefully that'll give me just enough extra clearance that I can uh, drive it and hopefully get it in and out of the trailer. Okay, so while I have the wheels off the car, I want to go ahead and work on mounting, or I should say dismounting, because I need to take all the tires off so that I can uh, prep and paint all the wheels, and then I have a bunch of new tires to mount after that's done. So I'm going to get working on that. It's going to take quite a while to dismount this many tires, so I just need to get her done. Okay, so we got all the tires dismounted, so now I need to work on getting the Plasti Dip off, and you can see why. It's in pretty rough shape, so I want to get it all off and get the wheels painted. So I've seen a few videos that uh, used kerosene and uh, just a paintbrush, and it works really well for removing Plasti Dip. They make a dissolver spray too, but it's like 26 bucks for a like spray bottle, like a Windex size bottle, uh, which is pretty pricey. This was 10 bucks for a gallon, so you get a lot more. And you can't get the uh, Plastidib dissolver locally. You have to order it online, and I don't really have time to wait for that. So I'm really hoping this is gonna work, because uh, if it does, it's gonna save me a ton of time. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. So it's definitely eating away at the plastic dip. I can feel it starting to get sticky. But so far, 
not taking it off as fast as I was expecting. Oh yeah, it's definitely working though. I'm gonna let that one soak for a minute and move on to the other one. See if that makes it any easier. Okay, so I took it and pressure washed it, and that got basically all of it off. It still wasn't fast. It took quite a while just to do one wheel, but it's better than nothing. So I'm going to continue to do that for the rest of them, and then we'll get these wheels painted. All right, so we got the wheels painted and mounted, so let's have a look. So I'm not sure how I feel about the white wheels on a white car. I guess time will tell, but I think I like it. It seems pretty cool. I really liked the black wheels. Uh, the problem with those is that in photos and video, the wheel like uh, disappears basically. You can't see it because it just blends in with the background and with the tire. And I really like the wheels to pop. So I think the white's gonna look good, especially for that side of things. So, so I guess we'll just drive it for a while and see what I think. But now that that's done, it's time to get the front bumper on, uh, which won't take too long. If uh, you watched my front end uh, build series, you'll know that I already have some tabs on the bash bar and uh, it uses the factory plastic clips. I just need to bolt those on. The bumper will slide on and then I just need to drill some holes in the bash bar uh, for the factory uh, clips. So these are the clips I was talking about. You just push them in and it spreads the uh, feet and locks in place. Uh, these aren't the factory ones. The head actually sticks out a little on these, so I'm not sure if they're gonna work, but we're gonna try them and find out. All right, front bumper's on. Now all that's left to do on the front end is get the kidney grills back in, but they're still drying from getting painted. Because the first thing you do with any BMW is paint the kidney grills black. It makes it look so much better. I'm not a big fan of chrome in general, so I pretty much delete chrome on everything, like my truck, I've painted the uh, grill guard. Man. This thing's a complete car again. Hasn't been this way in a long time. I think those white wheels are looking good. Let me know what you guys think about the wheels down in the comment. Is the white cool? Should I paint them a bright color or should I go back to black? Not really a fan of the bright colors. It's just a little bit too much for me. 
especially on just a plain white car. If it was like a full-blown race car with a livery and had colored wheels that matched, that's a different story. But anyways, what else is on the list? Uh, front bumper. Uh, kidneys painted is done, except I still need to install them, so I'm gonna leave that up there just to remind myself. I'm not gonna repaint the valve covers or do any heat wrap right now. There's no time for that. Uh, I need to do touch-up paint on all the little black patches, wire the tack, mount more tires, weld the spare diff, and fix the headlights, and maybe fix the exhaust. So really there's not much left to do, and I've still got two days to do it. But that doesn't mean I'm going to slack off and not do it now. I'm going to get as much done as I can and then have plenty of time to chill afterwards. <laughs> oh, that's still probably going to be super noticeable. And yeah, maybe I'll just get it dirty to match the rest of the hood and then you won't see it. That blends in pretty well. At least in the dark. <laughs> Looks good enough to me. At least until we actually paint the car. Okay, so I got my spare diff welded. And when I say spare diff, I don't actually mean a spare to replace the one in the car if it breaks. I mean a spare diff ratio. So the one in the car is a 3.91, so it's got pretty short gears. And this one here is a 3.15. I always like to have at least two different gear ratios um, for options, you know. If all you do is skid pad events where it's a really short layout and you can just do it in second gear the whole time, then you probably don't ever need options. But if you go like in the, when my car had stock power, if you go from a skid pad to a big fast track, it, you have to do third gear, but it doesn't have enough power with the 3.15. So you put a 391 in to shorten third gear a little bit, and then the car has enough power to actually be able to spin third gear. So even with more power in the car now, there's still gonna be times where if you're in second, you just instantly hit rev limiter and you just don't even move hardly anywhere. And if you're in third, it's too long and you have to clutch kick constantly. So it's always good to have diff choices. Now, obviously the ideal solution would be a winner's quick change, but those are really expensive. So that's not on the table just yet. So I just need to throw some RTV on that, slap it back together and toss it in the trailer. So we have it in case we need it. All right, so next I have two quick wiring projects to take care of. Uh, one is the headlights right now um, only the turn signal and one of the bulbs has the wires to it because when I loomed everything the uh, <clears throat> The other light ended up being too short so I may have to extend them or I'm if I'm lucky I can just reloom them and get them to reach like they did when it wasn't loomed And then the other thing is to wire up this tack that I've got here that's just gonna be a temporary tack because I haven't gotten the stock one to work. I'm not sure if I'll be able to or if I need a converter of some sort, but I wanna have at least some kind of tack signal, um, especially since I'm not used to the engine yet. And because of the issue with it shutting off, I'm probably gonna to have to short shift it. So shift it at maybe 4,000 to 4,500 RPM. Now this is gonna be pretty easy uh, to wire up. And a quick trick for all of you BMW guys, this instrument cluster just has two screws up at the top here. If you just leave those screws out, the cluster is not gonna go anywhere. Um, it stays put just fine, but then you can take it in and out whenever you want. So if you're like me and you're constantly getting to all the wiring behind there, I just leave the screws out and then I can just pop the cluster out, take a look at everything behind there and then pop it back in, it's super easy. So I'm gonna get those knocked out real quick and then we'll move on to something else. Tack is working, so that's done now. 
All right, so we got the car all loaded up. It wasn't too bad. I just raised the front of the trailer and then I had to put some two by sixes here to raise up the back of the car so that the exhaust would go over the crest here. But other than that, worked out pretty well. <clears throat> got the whole toolbox. We got six tires plus the two that are on the car. So that's it. We're officially ready to go to the first drift event in the 2JZ E36. Super excited. I can't wait. So we're going to end this one here and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one where we finally drive this thing.